Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 9th June 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, Superior Profit or more importantly how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When we take swing trades, we like to align them with the broad market. We try to understand the market's direction using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical charts of the broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning our trades with the market, we also want to align them with the industry's strength and weakness. We will study that using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade examples from our traders forum or social network pages and certainly look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let us move to live system. We begin our commodity study with oil. We are looking at US oil, the oil ETF, using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this template at a glance template because it can help us identify a low risk swing trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. A few weeks ago, US oil displayed a possible reversal signal, bearish reversal signal in the daily chart. From there, it dropped sharply and went below the lower boundary. It is clearly moving downward in the daily chart. However, it is already below lower boundary. Therefore, we are not going to try any short trade right now. Looking at the weekly chart, we can see that though the candle color is remaining bearish, magenta, this week's candle shape is bullish. Earlier, it had broken down below the memory support line, the automatically drawn smart train line, we call memory line. It broke below that and this week it tried to recover however close just below that. From the weekly candle shape, it seems that the next week's likely direction of oil may be upward that may be used for day trading purpose. There is no swing trade setup in oil right now. Now we are analyzing gold using the ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, gold dropped for several weeks. The candle colors were magenta, bearish. This week, candle color changed to neutral and the candle shape is neutral as well with both upper tail as well as lower tail. In the daily chart, 
several days ago it displayed a possible bullish reversal signal so far it is able to catch the very low of gold from there it went to value area at that time there was trend line resistance near value area based on which i thought that it will go down little bit that happened this week on tuesday gold bounced up from the trend line support with heavy activity and for the last 3 days it is moving sideways as gold is inside a triangle pattern there is no clear direction for swing trading we may stay away from gld for day trading purpose it will be optimal if price comes down to the support memory goes up from there letting us a very low risk long day trade opportunity or if gold goes up to the resistance memory and tilts down from there giving us a very low risk short day trade opportunity for swing trade we may wait for gold to break out of the triangle from commodities analysis we now move to market breadth analysis to decide market's strength or weakness every week we study this using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts in addition to that we study three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume because this analysis is using weekly charts and broad indices it is to be used for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading over the longer term weekly interval both nasdaq and nyse continue to be in uptrend the support memory lines the trend lines are providing excellent support until these are broken both the indices will remain in uptrend looking more closely we can see that nasdaq is much stronger than nyse it broke above the earlier peak and made a new all time high this week it is overbought as indicated by the dot appearing on top of the candle nyse on the other hand went up from the support trend lines however it is moving in a narrow range it couldn't break out of the high made several weeks ago if we look at the internals we can see that though nasdaq made a new all time high the new high low made a much shallower high showing a divergence between price and new high low that may be a signal for caution other than that the indices as well as the internals have nothing bearish about the chart all the internals closed positive one went up from previous week's close five declined from previous week's close however most of them closed comfortably above zero therefore in summary we may conclude based on data that both the indices continue to be in uptrend nasdaq is much stronger than nyse the internals are also bullish there is some caution in terms of the divergence of nasdaq new high low and nasdaq price but overall the charts are pretty bullish 
let's see if this bullishness is visible from the market ETFs as well. We are studying S&P 500 ETF SPY now using both weekly as well as daily chart. For last four weeks, SPY was closing at approximately the same level. This week, that changed. SPY went up sharply. It opened the week with a gap up move and since then strongly went up. In the daily chart, we can see it was moving sideways without any clear trend this week it opened with a gap up and since then strongly went up as price is already near the upper boundary lines we are not going to try any swing long trade right now because our stock will be far away if spy pulls back little bit and then goes up again giving us a cyan color candle that will give us a very low risk trend following swing long trade opportunity. QQQ NASDAQ ETF QQQ went up strongly. It broke above the watermark in the weekly chart that was created by previous all time high. It tried to go above that, however, closed below that watermark resistance level. The week ended with a long upper tail candle that may be some signal for caution. If we look at the daily chart, we can see that QQQ went up strongly, came to the daily watermark level tried to go up, displayed a bear release signal on Thursday, closed below the watermark resistance. On Friday, it opened with a gap down, however recovered. There were multiple support trend lines. They provide excellent support, therefore we would expect NASDAQ to recover from the support lines on Friday and exactly that happened. Price is supported by memory trend lines therefore we are not going to try any short trade right now and it is also bullish that is another reason we are not going to try any short trade. As QQQ is very close to the upper boundary we are not going to try any long trade either because our logical stop will be below recent low that is far away from current price. Dow Jones Industrial Average DIA using Q at a glance template. This was weaker than SPY and QQQ for last several weeks. Interestingly, if you look at the weekly chart, you can see though it was moving sideways, the weekly candle colors never changed to neutral. They remained cyan, bullish. Last week's candle ended with a bullish shape and this week it went up strongly. Like SPY, it opened with a gap up on Monday and for the rest of the days of the week, it went up strongly. We always keep an eye on long lower tail candles because they tend to tell us that next week the move is going to be upward. That happened this week as well. In the daily chart like SPY, DIA was moving sideways. This week it broke out of the watermark resistance level and closed very near the upper boundary lines. Because it is near the upper boundary lines and far from the recent low 
we are not going to take any long trade because our stop will be far away. It is clearly bullish, so we are not going to take any short trade either. The last ETF that we study every week is the Russell 2000 IWM ETF. This had been the strongest of the four ETFs in recent time. On this week, it made a new all-time high. It closed above the watermark resistance level. One week ago, it made another new all-time high and this week, it made yet another new all-time high going up strongly the strongest among the four ETFs right now in the daily chart we had several possible reversal signals the bearish headwind signals however price was supported by memory trend line and it was going up there was no bearish headwind trade setup therefore when the headwind signals came following discipline one will add trailing stop using Q protection signal however there was no reason to exit any long position that one might be holding at the right edge price is above the upper boundary lines far from the recent low Therefore, we are not going to take any long trade right now. If we combine the information from the market breadth and the market ETF, we see that there is no sign of bearishness, except maybe some cautionary signal displayed by the divergence of NASDAQ price and NASDAQ new high lows. everything seems bullish from this market level analysis it will be better to stick with only long trades for swing trading purpose and stay away from short trades which sectors and industries to target for long trade we can find that out from sector and industry level analysis let us do that now This graph shows four week performance of the sectors. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and yellow bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up and any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. This week 9 of the 11 sectors gained. On top of that 7 sectors are now up for 3 successive weeks showing a very bullish picture. At the sector level market is bullish there is no other way of putting it. Therefore, the sector level performance is in sync with what we observe from the market level analysis. That market is strongly bullish. Sectors are strongly bullish as well. Though the market is strongly bullish, one may continue to be careful and avoid buying overbought stocks, technically overbought stocks, as well as fundamentally overvalued stocks. That is a discipline that we follow all the time consumer discretionary is the best performing sector by far it went up by 4.74 percentage this week which is a much larger percentage than all the other sectors interesting isn't it a few weeks ago, technology was the best performing sector. It was going up strongly and now consumer discretionary is the best performer. Some sector rotation is evidently taking place. 
what are the seven sectors that now closed positive for all the review periods these are telecom real estate infotech industrials healthcare consumer staples and consumer discretionary telecom and consumer staples had been laggards in recent times one may keep an eye on these sectors for possible turnaround if the possibility of turnaround in telecom and consumer staples is displayed in the qa sector industry heat maps then one may have an opportunity to catch the very bottom of some fundamentally strong stocks in this sector though the market is very bullish one sector declined quite sharply that is utilities there was a warning sign of this possible decline in last week's decelerating industries list several of them were in utilities if i remember correctly at least three of the decelerating industries among the top 10 decelerating industries were in utilities that would raise an alert for us not to take new long positions in utilities instead protect profit in utility stocks using q protection signal and that would be a wise decision utilities dropped sharply these are 10 of the best performing industries this week this graph is displaying the five day score this week score and score over 10 days instantly from the graph we can see that the industries that were strong last week are remaining strong this week as well the scores are at approximately the same levels eight of the best performing industries eight of the ten best performers are in consumer discretionary sector this is reflecting the strength of the sector as a whole these eight consumer discretionary industries are computer and electronics retail department stores apparel accessories and luxury goods specialty stores home improvement retail laser facilities home furnishing retail and automotive retail diverse industries from the same sector in department stores we identified a long opportunity in jc penny as it bounced up from long term watermark support that happened on 29th may since then the stock has nicely gone up giving us considerable profit if we zoom in on to the friday's performance then we can see from key wage that home building was the best performing industry on friday over one day period several stocks may be at or near buy point these include dhi wlh and bzh let us use q edge now to look at the sector performance drill down to the best performing industries study the department stores home building industries and further drill down to the stocks jc penny dhi wlh and bc you will see using q edge and q charts you are often able to catch the stocks moves at the most optimal point lowest risk and highest probability point i am going to use the beta version of q edge once you open the revamped q edge it will connect to thomson reuters and collect significant amount of data and put it in local cache 
therefore once we open it we may give it couple of minutes to sync up the data after that we can keep it running whole day it will connect with thomson reuters update the data all the time allowing us to have a real time view of the sectors industries as well as stocks performance and now because the data is cached we can drill down in an instant this revamped qa allows us to do top down analysis from sector to industry to stocks and even a kind of bottom up analysis by choosing a stock and instantly analyzing its peers as well as looking at its industry strength and sector strength we may click the calculator button to establish connection with thomson reuters and collect initial data i have already done that after that you may click the broadcast button that will sync up the cache data with the sector industry and stock panels let us go to the sector panel qa analyzes 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day periods usually for swing trading we may look at the 5 days period scores or the 1 day period scores for long term investment we may look at the 5 days period scores to decide when to take an entry in the earlier version of qa we used to focus only on the 5 days scores both for long term investment as well as for swing trading this revamped qa is more sensitive to price changes therefore for swing trade entry it is perfectly all right to focus on the one day scores and we will demonstrate that in today's session for any of the periods we can double click on the header to sort by that period instantly using the scorecard and heat map qa shows that currently consumer discretionary and telecom services are the best performing sectors energy and utilities are the worst performer in addition to current strength and weakness it also shows which sectors were strong earlier scores were in cyan color and now changing to weakness magenta color and which sectors were relatively weak earlier somewhat magenta and now turning cyan consumer discretion consumer discretionary is now strong over one month period 10 days period as well as 5 days period so it has been strong for a while to drill down into any of the sectors we can put our cursor on that row and click on the drill down button we are drilling down into consumer discretionary sector all the consumer discretionary industries are brought into the industry panel we can get the best performing industries to the top by double clicking on the 5 days column we can instantly see from the heat map that department stores is one of the strongest we can drill down into department stores and do a pr analysis of the underlying stocks all the department stores stocks are displayed in the stock panel and we can see jc penny jcp is a stock with excellent valuation we know that from the cyan color on the primary valuation column we can also see that jc penny had 
significant earnings growth in the latest quarter. If you were following news on JCPenney, JCPenney news was negative. However, based on data in terms of sector strength, industry strength, and fundamental strength, JCPenney was a stock where we could start looking for a buy opportunity. That opportunity came recently and I had shared the trade idea in the forum. Let us have a look at that post. On 29th May, I had shared this trade idea on JCPenney in our traders forum. Bounce long trade setup, low price stock at low risk buy point. For some reason, the images were not loading, so I resubmitted them today. This is JCPenney using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it came to a long term watermark level and bounced up from there. That bounce up happened precisely on this daily candle. When the bull release signal appeared, the bull release signal, cyan color arrow, is in cyan color showing that it was at pendulum low, a very low price level. Prior to that, JCPenney dropped sharply. Therefore, we had a situation where after dropping suddenly and sharply, the stock stabilized and went up from a long term support. That met all the conditions of a bounce long trade setup. This was 29th May. We could take a long trade at the close of that day, putting stop just below recent low. We could book profit, partial profit once the risk distance was covered as the weekly as well as daily are bullish. The stock continues to be optimally valued. Industry is strong. There would not be any reason to close entire position. Following discipline, one might hold partial position and try to let profit run. Applying stop in such a way that the entire trade is risk free from that time onward. This was how the technical chart looked on 29th May. How did I identify this trade? I identified it actually using bottom up approach using Q sonar. This is Q sonar on trade station. You could identify this opportunity using Q sonar on Metastock as well. On that day, I saw many stocks were bearish. There was predominance of red and magenta color in this dashboard. However, I noticed this stock, JCPenney, JCP, had a cyan color signal on the box trade setup. That led me to analyze the stock further and I could identify the bounce long trade opportunity. It was a box setup on the daily chart as well. However, the weekly was not yellow. Therefore, I didn't submit the trade idea as a box trade setup. It met all the requirements of bounce long trade setup and I use that setup instead because we have very clear unambiguous checklists for each of the four standard trade setups. We can decide easily at the right end whether a valid low risk entry opportunity is there or not. In this case, we had a valid low risk entry opportunity using the bounce long trade setup. Department stores, we saw, continues to be strong and JCPenney continues to be optimally valued. This is a stock where we could easily enter the long trade with confidence using Q360 degrees analysis. Let us go to the industry panel, refresh the data. We can refresh the data using the refresh button. The revamped QA is more sensitive to stocks price changes. Therefore, we can use the one day period to identify trade opportunities for swing trading purpose. 
I was watching QAs in real time on Friday. By double clicking on the one day column, I could look for the best performing industries. Instantly, I could see that home building was the very best performer. It was week earlier, magenta color scores, and now nicely gaining strength became best performer on Friday. You could do this analysis in real time and drill down into underlying stocks by clicking the drill down button. And now you will see when you start using the revamped QA, the stocks will be retrieved almost immediately because of the data being cached. At the same time, it is constantly in link with Thomson Reuters. So if there is any price change, either at stock level or there is strength change at sector or industry level, that will be reflected immediately. Here are all the stocks in the home building industry because the industry was weak for a while we could look for good value stocks for that we could sort the stocks using valuation primary column by simply double clicking on that column and we can see bzh and wlh both are optimally valued both of them have excellent recent quarter earnings growth as well. BZH has more than 400% earnings growth in recent quarter and WLH has more than 145% earnings growth in recent quarter. The third stock that I identified DHI, I didn't identify it from QH I had run a sonar on meta stock with certain criteria and there I got DHI as a stock that is currently breaking out of triangle pattern and the breakout is happening in such a way that it is giving us a low risk entry opportunity. So I could mix the approaches using top down approach I could identify BZH and WLH and separately I ran QSonar on a large list of stocks, more than 1000 stocks in the USA market. Those were liquid optionable stocks. From that bottom up analysis, I identified DHI that happened to be in home building industry. So these three stocks were of interest. Let us look at these three stocks using technical chart. We are looking at BZH. Now we are using Metastock, that is Q Global on Metastock. In the weekly chart, it created a nice base, and this week ended with a bullish shape and bullish color and color candle. In the daily chart, it had multiple watermark support levels. Price tried to go below that multiple times three times, even four times. Each of the four times it failed and price recovered above the support level. Showing that some big players were probably providing support. On Friday, it opened above the trend line resistance. One could take a long trade right near the open using real-time fine-tune chart the day ended with a bullish shape and bullish color candle the industry was the strongest and one could continue to hold the trade based on that insight this stock is an optimally valued stock in terms of fundamental that also would give us more confidence to take a long trade in the stock WLH, the second stock that we identified in home building that is also optimally valued. This stock came to the watermark support in the weekly chart, displayed a bull release signal 
and went up with a bullish shaped candle. In the daily chart, it displayed the possible bullish reversal signal. Since then, moved essentially sideways. On Friday, it closed strongly higher with a bullish shape and bullish color candle. One could take the stock long position using the box sideways market long trade setup. On Friday, it met all the unambiguous checklist conditions for that setup. The stock is fundamentally strong, industry was the strongest. Therefore, using Q360 degrees analysis, one could confidently take the long trade. The third stock in this industry, DHI, I identified it using bottom-up approach. Let me run that sonar. In Q Global, we have a number of sonars and we can run them together, letting the output of one sonar to go to the input of another. These were the sonars that I ran. I was looking for stocks that were breaking up. Market was bullish, therefore I was looking for bullish trade. I didn't want to run the breakout downward sonar. Instead, I chose the breakout up sonar. I was looking for stocks that were breaking out with heavy activity, unusually high activity, and the stocks that were above both slow as well as very slow direction line, meaning the stocks were in confirmed uptrend and then breaking up with high activity. I ran these sonars on a large list of stocks, liquid optionable stocks in the USA market. I ran them in such a way that result of one sonar was going to be fed into the other sonar. Let me run it in real time. To speed it up, I will look for high activity stocks first, then stocks that are above slow direction, then stocks that are above very slow direction and lastly I will look for stocks that are breaking up. We can run the expression on live market. We can see all the sonars running one after another. The first one is running now, Q activity unusual heavy. You can see the progress in the progress bar. The other three sonars are idle now. When the first sonar is completed, the output will be fed into the second sonar. The first sonar is now complete. It has rejected a large number of stocks. Only 135 stocks are filtered. And the second sonar is now running on the smaller list of 135 stocks. Second sonar has found 73 candidate stocks. Now the third sonar is running. It has found 66 stocks. Now the last sonar to look for breakout opportunities is running on these 66 stocks. And it has found only 8 stocks. This is how starting from a large number of stocks, more than 1500 stocks, in a few minutes we can hone in on a very small list of stocks, letting QSONA do the hard work and using mix and match we can articulate very complex scenarios, look for this and this and this like we could do just now. I looked at all these stocks, 8 stocks, all of them are breakout candidates. DHI, DR Horton was of more interest because it belonged to the home building industry. You could click on open chart to open the stock. Let's look at DHI using weekly and daily at a glance template. I have set up everything on the menu bar. So just clicking that will open the weekly and daily together. In the weekly chart, DHI I was moving somewhat sideways. It had a trend line resistance. This week it sharply broke above that trend line resistance. 
the weekly candle shape and color both are bullish in the daily it was inside triangle pattern on friday it broke out sharply with very high activity there is another trend line resistance nearby therefore on friday at market close i might not enter the long trade what one could do is to watch the stock on monday and see if it is going up above the second resistance trend line after market open and then using real time fine tune chart take a very low risk entry in this way we could mix and match the top down approach as well as bottom up approach and identified stocks in the same best performing industry home building industry these three stocks are at or near buy point let's now move to the worst performing industries five of the worst performing industries are in utility sector reflecting the weakness of the sector last week at least three of the utilities industries were decelerating that was a warning sign for us and as it often happens decelerating industries end up being the worst performers in subsequent weeks that happened again the five worst performing utilities industries are electric utilities gas utilities water utilities multi utilities and independent power producers and energy traders in gas utilities we have this stock ato that gave a very profitable sideways market that is box short trade setup on 1st june and you could confidently take the trade based on q360 degrees analysis the industry was weakening at that time the stock was overvalued and technically it gave a low risk short point Let's study the worst performing industries using QA. Drill down to gas utilities industry. Further drill down to ATO. Do its PR analysis and look at its technical chart. Last time we had filtered on the home building industry stocks. We could refresh using the refresh button, or we could go back to dashboard and click on the broadcast button. it will refresh all the tabs sector industry and stock tabs with the latest data that qa had been syncing up with thomson reuters we can go to sector panel double click on the five days column utilities is the worst performing sector now clicking the drill down button will bring the utilities industries in the industry panel gas utilities is one of the weakest industry we could drill down into the gas utilities stocks by clicking the drill down button again and you can see the stock panel is refreshed immediately that is because of the new architecture of the revamped qa it caches a lot of data instantly from the color coding we can see ato is overvalued we know that from the magenta color on the valuation primary column let us look at ato's technical chart because we are going to look for a sideways market trade we could use this template on the daily chart this current template i am using on the daily chart allows us to identify all kinds of swing trades trending market sideways market exhausting market as well as reversing market if we want to look for sideways or exhausting market trades we could change to another template that has less signal let's do that this is the template we can use for deciding trade entry for sideways market and exhausting market condition this has all the signals that we need to check for the unambiguous checklist for these two trade set in the weekly chart ato came to the trend line resistance one week ago it tried to go 
above that but closed sharply lower. That week's candle shape was very bearish with a very long upper tail. The reversal from the memory trend line happened around 89 price level, 89 point something. Around the same time in the daily chart, price tried to go above the watermark resistance level, reversed with a bear release signal on this day. This day's candle color was still green, therefore we were not going to take a short trade at the close of the green bar. Activity was heavy that met all the conditions of a box short trade setup at a double top except that the daily candle color was not yellow or red yet. Therefore we would wait patiently for next day's market open and take a short trade using real time 5 minute chart. We could take a shot probably somewhere near the upper end of this first red candle. For swing trading purpose, we could put stop just above recent high. However, when we were entering the trade using real time chart, for that day we could put stop just above day's high. That day closed lower and it dropped further came to the trend line support level by that time much more than risk distance was covered following discipline we would book at least partial profit as the weekly candle is pretty bearish daily is bearish in fact it broke below the trend line support on friday industry is weak sector is weak there was no reason to exit full position, one could continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run. Yet another trade that we could take confidently based on the deceleration of the industry, the fundamental overvaluation of the stock and a very low risk technical short point on future. Every week we study the accelerating and decelerating industries. The accelerating industries tend to be the best performers in subsequent weeks. Decelerating industries tend to be the worst performers in subsequent weeks. These are the 10 most accelerating industries of the current week. If we look at them using QH, the heat map will show that several of these accelerating industries was weak earlier. Therefore, if you drill down to the underlying stock, you may get some of the stocks at a very low price level as value stocks. So we could buy the fundamentally strong stocks just as the industry and the stocks are starting to turn around. Four of the accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary sector. We saw a large number of best performers are in consumer discretionary and we see now many of the accelerating industries are also in consumer discretionary. No wonder it is the best performing sector by far. Consumer staples was weak earlier. However, it steadily gained over last few days. You may watch out for personal product stocks for potential long trade. In a related industry that is not personal products but household products industry, Procter & Gamble PG gave a trend following long setup on Wednesday 6th June. PG's industry was also strengthening. The stock is a value stock now. And technically it had a very nice buy point, low risk buy point. Therefore again we had a Q360 degree trade where industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength was aligned. We will look at PG momentarily. Using QH now we can look at the 
one day and two day periods performance of the industries because it is more sensitive now than before it is useful to look at the one day and two day period scores as well brewers industry is one of the best performers over last two days it is not coming in this list because this is the list of accelerating industries over five days period over the whole week our QH allows us to look at finer detail over last one day or two day periods and brewers is one of the best performers over those periods tap is a stock that is a value stock and it gave a trend following long trade on this thursday 7th june again just like procter and gamble we could take this trade in tap by aligning the forces from the industry level fundamental level as well as technical level. let's now move to qa look at the accelerating industries drill down into household products and brewers industries and finally drill down to procter and gamble and tap in qa to see the most accelerating industries we can sort by the pace five days column the accelerating industries have their pace score in cyan color we can see personal products is accelerating fast it was weak earlier scores were in magenta color and now turned cyan and the transition to cyan score happened with high pace that's why the pace five days column is also cyan we could filter for the household products industry and instantly from the heat map we can see household products industry was also weak earlier and now rapidly gaining strength in recent periods if we open up the other pace columns we can see over two days period it accelerated heavily therefore using the end of day version of qh or the real time version we could see the strengthening happening in this industry and drill down into underlying stocks we could click the drill down button but instead of doing that let's do it in another way i will refresh industry panel with all the industries let's go to the stock panel refresh and look for the stock Procter and Gamble. We know the ticker symbol already PG. We can filter by the ticker symbol. This stock is optimally valued. We know that instantly from the cyan color on the valuation primary column. Here is a decent dividend of 3.7%. To do a peer analysis, now it is as simple as clicking the analyze button that will retrieve all of Procter and Gamble's peers and show them side by side. We can see there are several other optimally valued stocks and several of them have very high earnings quality. Many of them pay a decent dividend. So you could look for potential long opportunity in other stocks of this industry as well. Because we conducted a peer analysis starting from a stock symbol, it didn't only do the peer analysis of Procter & Gamble, it also populated the industry panel with Procter & Gamble's industry. So it is a kind of bottom up approach starting from stock to do a peer analysis it's industry analysis which is showing gain of score and also a sector analysis if we open up the most recent periods we can see consumer staple sector was weak earlier but gain heavily over two days and one day periods over one day period on Friday it is actually the best performing sector so Procter and Gamble is a stock where fundamentals are optimal 
in terms of valuation industry is strengthening sector is strengthening let's look at procter and gamble's charts now we are looking at a stock that is going up in the daily chart that is in uptrend for looking at a potential trade setup for trending market we can change the template to the trending market template that will change the signals we can use the hotkeys interest station in the weekly chart you can see it had multiple candles with long lower tails we are always careful about long lower tail candles we start looking for potential long trades from that time onward that time the weekly candle colors were still neutral after that it turned cyan this week it went up sharply in the daily chart it displayed a possible reversal signal that again could catch the very bottom of the stock that is why whenever this reversal signal appears q traders are careful in this case if we were holding a short position in procter and gamble at minimum we would apply trailing stop using q protection signal and if the unambiguous checklist conditions for the reversal trade setup are met then we would also take a reversal long trade those trades allow us to take a very low risk and give potentially large profit in the daily chart on this wednesday it gave us a cyan color candle the stock was already going up price was supported by multiple memory trend line supports so when the cyan color candle came on this wednesday that met all the conditions of a trend following long trade setup weekly candle color was already cyan so the weekly conditions were also met we could take a long trade at the close of wednesday putting stop just below recent low and initial profit target would be at upper boundary that was hit on thursday as well as friday as the weekly and daily both are clearly bullish the stock is optimally valued industry and sector are starting to do better there is no reason to exit enter position partial position may be held isn't it beautiful how using this visual tools you can easily identify potential trade setup not much scope of ambiguity the other stock we wanted to discuss was tap we can go to dashboard and click the broadcast button that will refresh all the panels sector industry as well as stock panels tab belongs to brewers industry happens to be consumer staple brewers are consumer staples <laughs> we can see consumer staples as a sector was weak earlier magenta color scores and now nicely changing strength over one day period that is on friday it was the best performing sector we could drill down these are the consumer staples industries brewers is an industry that was very weak earlier now gained strength sharply that is also showing up as acceleration over two days period we could drill down further into the brewer stock tap instantly it comes to our attention excellent valuation pays a dividend of 2.5 percent this is a stock that is optimally valued it is in an industry that was weak for long time therefore we would not expect the stock to have excellent growth that is true in this case also that is fine we don't expect a stock to be of good value and high growth at the same time if the industry was weak for long time we would probably look for value stocks tap is one of them let's look at its technical charts we could use meta stock or frustration either of them let's use meta stock this time in the weekly chart tap had a sharp drop earlier then it stabilized 
the weekly candle color change to neutral yellow and this way it change to cyan bullish display the bull release signal as well in the daily chart the same sharp drop is shown after that price gradually stabilized the smileys are showing that the price was at pendulum low at a very low price level on thursday it gave us a cyan color candle that was the signal for a trend following long trade setup stop would be just below recent low and we could book partial profit at the upper boundary the trade is still on looking at the weekly as well as the daily it looks like it will hit profit target before going down from accelerating industries we move to the decelerating industries now they tend to be worse performers in subsequent weeks in the accelerating group many of them were in consumer discretionary sector for the decelerating industries they are distributed in various sectors no one sector is prevalent several of these were strong earlier and weakening now this may give short opportunities however the market is strongly bullish instead of looking for short trade one may be cautious about the existing long positions in this decelerating industries and put trailing stop the industries that were strong earlier and changing strength now are food distributors alternative carriers forest products biotech internet software and services and healthcare equipment let's look at them through qa we can refresh all the industry and every time we refresh it is going to give us the latest data from thomson reuters so we can keep it running whole day and get to see the sector rotation industry rotation and stocks changes happening in real time to get the decelerating industries we could click on the page 5 days column the decelerating industries come with magenta color score over page 5 days column we can see several of them like food distributors was strong earlier cyan color now changing to magenta same is true for alternative carriers same is true for internet software services etc because the market is bullish we may not want to take many short trades but we may be careful about any long position in these stocks those were the usual topics of the week i also wanted to discuss some very nice q trade setups that i noted down in the sticky notes where is my sticky notes we already discussed jc penny a best performing industry stock we discussed ato one of the worst performing industry stock discussed procter and gamble from accelerating industry let us look at starbucks i shared a short trade idea on starbucks in our traders forum a few days ago let's look it up i am a regular customer of starbucks whichever country i am in if there is a starbucks i tend to visit it i don't have to go to office i can trade and do my analysis from anywhere starbucks is one of my favorite places but that doesn't mean i will keep on buying starbucks if the stock is showing weakness on this day 31st may i shared this post enjoy your cappuccino but be cautious about starbucks starbucks is in news it has some concerns from that angle as well when i shared the trade idea i observed that it was meandering around going down up down and then moving sideways at the right edge that is where we have to make a trading decision it broke below the trend line support gave us a magenta color candle and it was breaking down with heavy activity that allowed me to take a short trade putting stop just above recent high and trying to book profit at the next support level this watermark support level other than analyzing the technical charts i also looked at starbucks price performance 
this is one of the panels of q vital or q edge stock drill down and i saw starbucks though it has a very strong brand name in terms of price performance this is nowhere near the top of the stocks list this stock wing for example has a one year gain of 90 percent plus whereas starbucks has a loss of more than nine percent that is over 12 months period one year period if we look at one month period then it still has a loss of slightly less than one percent still under loss what about three months period very small gain less than one percent six months period small loss less than one percent loss but a loss so over multiple periods instantly from the position of starbucks we can see that in its industry that is i think restaurants industry it was a laggard all along throughout the year and then the technical charts showed a very low risk short opportunity and it has negative news usually i don't care so much for the news however in this case the news were significant negative news let's look at starbucks as of today this is daily chart of starbucks as of today i suggested the short trade on this magenta color candle initial profit target was near the watermark support level that was hit on this candle and i remember some other traders were telling i am going to short the stock on this day they were late price was already at support level i could book profit based on my early entry and i could make the early entry based on color coded signal so those who took a shot after this sharp drop had to go through some pain and probably some of them were stopped out then i saw that it made a bearish shape candle right from the trend line resistances the candle color was still green next day that is on friday it turned magenta so i shared with some of my friends and as of friday starbucks has given another possible trend following short trade setup as the market is bullish one may be careful about taking short trades but isn't it nice that based on objective analysis when we decided to take the short trade on starbucks and i always share my trades beforehand not all my trades but they were a my trade in the traders forum the short trade was selected carefully in spite of the market going up since then the short trade worked beautifully and on friday i think it gave another possible swing short trade setup. i suggest taking trades against the market only when you are aware of the stock in detail at industry level sector level fundamental technical level and if there is any major news or not otherwise it is always better to stick to the market general trend another stock this is from the india market beautiful example of catching the very bottom that most other people will be not taking and they will be missing out on the opportunity I shared it in the blog post. Let's have a look at that. We can look at the blogs from education blog page or from the right side bar. You can scroll down to the recent blogs. How crazy or disciplined you have to be to buy this stock at this lowest point. Let us look at that blog. I see there are many traders who are comfortable taking trend following trades when the stock is already in uptrend. That is very good. Trend is our friend and we have a trend following trade setup that works very well. That worked for Starbucks as a short trade even if the market was bullish. So it worked very well. However, we also have very robust reversal trade setups, several of them. This is a stock that I identified using 360 degrees analysis the trade setup in fact came on this candle 
the candle that made the lowest point of the stock. It was coming down sharply, had extreme high volume and on this day the yellow candle it reversed sharply with again extreme high volume. That could be a signal for a bounce long trade setup provided we had a robust support either from long term watermark level or from a trend line support, memory trend line support. That was not visible on the daily chart. The trend line support was on the weekly chart. And this trend line is coming from far, far away. So far away that it would not be possible to draw it manually. The system takes care of drawing all the smart trend lines. Not every trend line is significant, but the system takes care of drawing the important ones. One could watch out for this stock to reverse from this very long term trend line and using real time chart take the trade right at the very bottom. That is precisely the point where it reverses from the daily chart as well. So we could take a long trade at the very low point. It has gone up for one week and if you do the calculation you will see this up move is more than 30 percent. Now some traders wait for a trend following setup where even weekly is in uptrend that will happen somewhere around say 225 250 price level if the stock continues to go up. We already could capture about 30 percent of profit by the time it is in uptrend in the weekly chart our trade would have clearly more than 100 percent probably few hundred percent profit and the trade risk was very low. Was it only technical charts based on which I could take the trade? No. Using QH for the India market we could see this stock belongs to advertising industry which was weak for long time and we could see it transitioning sharply to strength over two days and one day period. So the industry was starting to accelerate it was weak for a long time, so we would expect the stock also to be at a low price level. That happened for this stock and we could catch the stock just as the industry was also turning around. One last stock that I wanted to discuss is BFB. They are makers of Jack Daniels. Very large American owned spirits and wine company. Why I wanted to discuss this is to take into account the market news which often tends to be market noise. There are many news articles that because of the trade friction between the America, the United States of America and China, Mexico etc. There may be duties imposed on this company BFP, their products and the stock may fall. So some traders are thinking of shorting it. However, I looked at its industry and technical charts and the conclusion was otherwise. That is the value of making decision based on data, not based on news articles. Let's look at BFB, do a peer analysis, do its industry sector analysis and also look at its technical chart. We can conduct all of these in a matter of minutes as we will do right in this case we know the stock interestingly it is related to brewers tap was optimally valued we don't know whether bfb is also optimally valued or not let's check it out we could refresh the stocks then filter for bfb brown and format we have bfb it is not optimally valued so it has weakness in terms of fundamentals, not valued well. Also it has recent quarters earnings growth as negative. So in terms of growth as well as valuation, it is not a strong stock. TAP was much stronger. We could conduct a peer analysis by clicking the magnifying glass. This list has only two stocks, 
STG is also overvalued, though STG has better growth in the recent quarter. Also in the recent years, last one year, two years and three years period, STG has better growth. So overall we can see that STG is stronger than BFB. We are now currently discussing BFB. BFB fundamentally is not strong. What about its industry? When we conducted the peer analysis, the industry panel filtered to the stocks industry automatically. And we can see distillers and vintners was weak earlier, but over two days and one day period, over Thursday onward and Friday, it is strengthening rapidly. This is not a time I would like to short a stock in this industry. What about the sector? Consumer staples. We saw it already was weak earlier, also strengthening rapidly. On Friday, it was actually the best performance. So from fundamental level, we see weakness. However, industry and sector strengths or weaknesses are not aligned. Therefore, we were not going to take a short trip. What about technical chart? This is Brown and Foreman using daily chart. We see in recent period it has dropped significantly and at the right edge it actually hit the watermark support level, pivot support level. On Friday it closed above the support level completing a false downside breakout with heavy activity. The prior three down days were with heavy volume Friday's up day reversal day was with heavy volume as well this is somewhat similar to a box long trade setup at double bottom that is no time to take a short trade in the stock if the stock goes up to value area and tilts down gives us a magenta color candle that may give us a low risk short opportunity fundamentals are weak if at that time industry weakens again then we will have all the forces aligned for a short trade right now there is no short opportunity in terms of technicals as well as industry and sector trade. so whatever be the news we would not like to take a short trade in this stock right now. let me summarize we do a comprehensive analysis of the market using visual tools. At the market level, we analyze it using market break and broad market ETF. There we saw that there is no sign of bearishness except some warning signal from the bearish divergence of NASDAQ broad market index and new high low internal. Other than that, everything is bullish. At the sector level, we saw it is very bullish and at the industry level we saw it is bullish and the industries that were bullish one week ago are continuing to remain bullish it will be better to look for only swing trades in the long direction and we could identify several such trades using q360 degrees analysis whatever be the market condition we can always find low risk high probability trade opportunities where sector, industry, fundamental and technical strengths are aligned. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.